Star Wars universe use of religious, philosophical, and other concepts originating from real-world sources. From pages 1 through 6 of Morals and Dogma by Albert Pike, force, unregulated or ill-regulated, is not only wasted in the void, like that of gunpowder burned in the open air, and steam unconfined by science, but, striking in the dark, and its blows meeting only the air, they recoil and bruise itself. The blind force of the people is a force that must be economized, and also managed, as the blind force of steam, lifting the ponderous iron arms and turning the large wheels, is made to bore and rifle the cannon and to weave the most delicate lace. Indle eft is to the people and the people's force, what the slender needle of the compass is to the ship the force must have a brain and a law. Thought is a force, and philosophy should be an energy, finding its aim and its effects in the amelioration of mankind. When all these forces are combined, and guided by the intellect, and regulated by the rule of right, and justice, and of combined and systematic movement and effort, the great revolution prepared for by the ages will begin to march. It is because force is ill-regulated, that revolutions prove fail tires. There are immense forces in the great caverns of evil beneath society, in the hideous degradation, squalor, wretchedness and destitution vices and crimes that reek and simmer in the darkness in that populace below the people of great cities. They have the brute force of the hammer, but their blows help on the great cause, when struck within the lines traced by the rule held by wisdom and discretion. Yet it is this very force of the people, this titanic power of the giants, that builds the fortifications of tyrants, and is embodied in their armies. It is the force of the people that sustains all these despotisms, the basest as well as the best that force acts through armies, and these oftener enslave than liberate. Despotism there applies the rule. Force is the mace of steel at the saddle bow of the knight or of the bishop in armor. Passive obedience by force supports thrones and oligarchies, Spanish kings, and Phoenician senates. Tyrants use the force of the people to chain and subjugate that is, in yoke the people. The force of the people is exhausted in indefinitely prolonging things long since dead in governing mankind by imborning old dead tyrannies of faith, restoring dilapidated dogmas, regilding faded, worm-eaten shrines, widening and rooting ancient and barren superstitions, saving society by multiplying parasites, perpetuating superal mutated institutions, enforcing the worship of symbols as the actual means of salvation, and dying the dead corpse of the past, mouth to mouth, with the living present. The sight of a single dungeon of tyranny is worth more, to dispel illusions, and create a holy hatred of despotism, and to direct force aright, than the most eloquent volumes. The force of the people maintained the power that built its gloomy cells, and placed the living in their granite sepulchres. The force of the people cannot, by its unrestrained and fitful action, maintain and continue in action and existence a free government once created. That force must be limited, restrained, conveyed by distribution into different channels, and by roundabout courses, to outlets, whence it is to issue as the law, action, and decision of the state. There must be the use at norma, the law and rule, or gauge, of constitution and law, within which the public force must act. The force of the people, or the popular will, in action and exerted, symbolized by the gavel, regulated and guided by and acting within the limits of law and order symbolized by the 24-inch rule, has for its fruit liberty, equality, and fraternity liberty regulated by law, equality of rights in the eye of the law, brotherhood with its beauty and obligations as well as its benefits. The rough ashlar is the people, as a mass, rude and unorganized. The perfect ashlar, or cubical stone, symbol of perfection, is the state, produced by force, acting by rule, hammered in accordance with lines measured by the gauge, out of the rough ashlar, it is an appropriate symbol of the force of the people. Darth Maul is depicted as the apprentice of Darth Sidious in the Star Wars Episode 1, Phantom Menace storyline. The character is of a species called the Zarbrath, and, until he received his black tattoos, his skin was solid red in color. In addition he has ten horns upon his head, and black gums and ng teeth, resembling the mouth of a lion. Aside from this, his name, of course, is Maul, which is a term used to describe attack by, among other animals, the lion.
The New Testament Book of Revelation contains mentions of a beast and a dragon who have some combination of the following traits. Scarlet in color. Ten horns on heads. Mouth of a lion. Chapter 12. Verse 3 And there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold a great red dragon. Having seven heads and ten horns. And seven crowns upon his heads. Chapter 13. Verses 1 and 2 And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. Chapter 17, verse 3 And I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. Verse 8 The beast who you saw was, and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit, and go into perdition within the Star Wars universe, Darth Maul, having been cut in half, falls into a very deep pit, and later returns as a cyborg. There is a character within the Star Wars universe who would likely not be recognized by name, even by relatively dedicated fans of the franchise. He does appear in the Star Wars the Force Unleashed video game as one of Emperor Palpatine slash Darth Sidious's prisoners, and goes on, with Princess Leia, her adoptive father's bail organ, and the other liberated prisoners, to found the Rebel Alliance. However, his name, Garm Belibelis, is not mentioned in the game. Garm is the name of a Persian town, and is also similar to the name of the Nordic god of hell, the realm of the dead. Bel is a word of Mesopotamian origin meaning lord or master. Iblis is the name of the jinn within the Islamic religion who is essentially equivalent to the Christian conception of the being Satan. The character is said in official Star Wars sources to have been opposed to the rise to power of Chancellor, and later Emperor, Palpatine. Count Dirku or Darth Tyrannus is depicted as a former Jedi who became the apprentice of Darth Sidious following the ostensible death of Darth Maul. Dooku is the name, in the Sumerian language, of the Sumerian holy mound. It is said that the book the Count of Monte Cristo Mount of Christ is an allegorical telling of the experiences of the Society of Jesus during the period of its officially having been banned by the papacy. Tyrannus is the name of an apparent owner or operator of a school in Ephesus, from which Paul preached for two years, according to the New Testament Book of Acts. Count Dirku is depicted as wearing a cape which reaches his boots, and a substantial gold belt, as well as being portrayed as having white hair. Chapter 1, verses 13 and 14 of the Book of Revelation And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girl about the paths with a golden girdle. His head and his hair were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. There is a form of yoga called Laya, meaning dissolution of the mind which is a homophone of the name Leo. The leader of the Kaminoan clone makers discovered by Obi-Wan Kenobi in the movie, Star Wars Episode 2, Attack of the Clones, is named Lamarsu, which is a homophone of the name Lamarsu, which is the name of the Babylonian gate demon with the head of a man, wings of an eagle, and body of either a lion or a bull. The word Kamino is a homophone of the Spanish word Camino, meaning way or path. According to chapter 12, verse 30 of the New Testament book of Matthew, and chapter 11, verse 23 of the book of Luke, Jesus said he who is not with me is against me during their battle on the volcanic planet of Mustafar in the movie Star Wars Episode 3. Revenge of the Sith, Anakin Skywalker says to Obi-Wan Kenobi, If you're not with me, then you're my enemy. To which Obi-Wan replies, only a Sith deals in absolutes. By the way, this comes immediately after Obi-Wan Kenobi expresses that his allegiance is to the Republic, to democracy! Democracy being a system which has only ever led to oligarchical or dictatorial rule. The prominent occult figure Eliphaz Levi is depicted in the background picture conjuring a demon which might look somewhat familiar to those acquainted to any degree with Star Wars. In addition, the Japanese series Yu Yu Hakusho contains a character, 
who is a demon, with the name Yoda who is similar in appearance to the Star Wars character of the same name. 